have some baby animals to show you, Spot. Let me find them, Dad. Are they in the barn? No! No calves here. Are they in the stable? It's a Scottish word for no. No foals here. Who's that hiding behind the bush? Only joking! <laughs> and who's that hiding in the straw? Is it a chicken? It is, but there's no chicks here. Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. My friends, my friends' parents started the Guinness Book of Records. Book. Well, they published here. Now they just cruise around the world in their giant mega yacht. It would be kind of weird if it was as small as mega yacht, but anyway. So we'll just do the laps. We'll go up and back, up and back, up and back, like a... Like a V, Z, Z, Z. By the way, we still haven't found copy and I'm not very happy about this. <laughs> Run away! Hey mate, can we, no, that's all right. Oh, well, do you have much to you got? How much cash? Some or little or lots? Oh, perfect. Can we get three three coconut custards, please? Oh, amazing! That just came out. Yeah. <gasps> See, I knew we were in the right spot. Thank you so much, mate. I really appreciate it. Here we go. So this is the vanilla custard, warm straight from the oven. So you get special treatment. You get special treatment when you uh, ask if you want to be filmed because they just want to make sure it's good. Yeah, true. Oh, ah. Oh, ha. Oh, God. Milk bun, pandan coconut. I reckon I'd have this over a jam burner every day. Look at it. Look at it. It's off the chain. Oh, oh no. Feels like it's meant to be here. Like the best thing I like about this is it's packed full of people doing one really good thing. Uh, everyone's here eating. It's super delicious. The streets are empty, but this area is busy, and you kind of get to choose from all the stuff you want to eat. Like, right? Like it's it's cool stuff. Do I want bimbap? Do I want Vietnamese? Do I want sort of like dumplings? Do I want laksa? Do I want you know? I quite enjoy this vibe, and it's way better than having Macca's, KFC, Subway. You know what I mean? Like all the chains, this is to me is just so much better, so much more fun. And uh, everyone's really kind to each other. You can go. Yes, mum, I'm coming home. You might be on film, you might be on film one day, right? Don't eat too much, no, totally right. Yeah, exactly. I love it. So how long have you lived in LA for? 12 years. <laughs> and just you? Uh, just me and my son. Beautiful. How wonderful. And you like it? Yes. Thank you. Right. Like you've, you're set solid, there's no worries? Yeah. Uh, in a sense, Uber is not my full time job. No. I have a full time job. Okay. Uh, I'm a researcher by profession. No way. <laughs> and I, I love it. The work campus. You know the work campus? Yeah. So, the research one. in what? Uh, agricultural research. <gasps> um, uh, I'm a crop physiologist looking at. Uh, Crop response to water, fertilizer, um, and right. the weather parameters like temperature. Right. 
But my PhD was in banana. <laughs> you have a PhD in banana cold. That's amazing. Started living here. It was very challenging because I moved here from, migrated here uh, from India yeah. uh, by myself. I didn't have any family or friends here. Wow. And all my educational qualifications were from India. But you fell in love with the town? You fell in love with Australia? Yes. Yeah. I love being here. And uh, I am in between contracts now doing a bit of Opening. <laughs> yeah. So I finished Master Chef season twelve, season eleven. Just finished. Oh, okay. So that's what just happened with me. And so now we're working. My obsession is vegetables. I am a huge advocate for uh -huh. vegetable sustainability, climate change, climate justice. Ah. No food waste and plastic okay. free. But that okay. is my jam. Mm. In a nutshell. So okay. basically, when you said you studied that, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing a show based exactly around that. Okay. About using, utilizing a whole ingredient, fighting food waste. Uh, and you turn up onto our door and start talking about food science and <laughs> what you do as a job. And that's just, I mean, agricultural science, sorry. Because yeah. I, I did, I, um, I studied food science myself. And I'd like to be able to come back and say, this is what we've created. Yep. Let's get people back onto the vegetable world. Let's yep. get us away from mass produced meat, uh, yep. bad quality meat. I believe meat should be eaten, but it's not done right. And so therefore we should not eat it. Yeah. I, had, uh, I had been vegetarian whole of my life yeah. and I have no issues at all. Yeah. No issues, absolutely. I'm not deficient in anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, and uh, I'm healthy. Yep. Uh, I'm absolutely fine. Write that down and like guarantee you that would never happen again. That was just too perfect. Why does the world need fermentation? It needs it because we cannot waste food and it is the ultimate form of stopping food wastage, those scraps that you throw out, that veggie that looks a bit limp, that you consider is not worthy of serving, can be fermented. Um, that's at one end of the scale. The other end of the scale is we've got to consume more living food. You know, that's, that's the reality. You want food that's alive. The reason why we're in Adelaide, and we are in Adelaide, hello everyone, um, is because of this woman. And we, we made a, pretty much the only traveling stop by plane because we wanted to experience your world in fermentation. This is ridiculous. Can you? <laughs> I can take you through. Can you take us through it? Actually, let's just do so that. It's great, it's, but it is kind of like that thing that, I guess it's like everybody that has a massive passion that once you start, you're like, where do you stop? Right. And then every day I think about something else that I can, <laughs> you know, what else can I do? Yeah. Yeah, so obviously we've got a mustard, a fermented mustard, kimchi, mm. preserved lemons. This is a really interesting one called Shio Koji, dill pickle, which is yummy. A soft drink, essentially, that's been made or started, the culture has been way from some mozzarella that I made. When people sort of think about creating or eating vegetables, they forget that there's so many options. That they think that all they can do is get a cabbage or get a lettuce, chop up some tomatoes, add some onion, and then that's a salad and that's pretty much all you can do. Or you can do some grains and make a grain thing. If you think about the possibilities, how much, how many different flavors from really salty, aged, umami heavy sort of miso down to really quite bright, really quick um, kraut, down to soon to be sodas and sodas here. Like there, these can be made into dressings. This can be put into a dressing and this can be put onto as like a peanut butter nearly in some ways, you know? But this is the flavor that I think a lot of plant-based eaters, uh, and even meat eaters, um, miss. And, and once you start creating this, the food that you create at home just elevates. Right. One, two. Totally rolling, totally ready. So, so we've all, yeah, we've all of a sudden, all of a sudden turned into like professionals. Uh, <laughs> my, this is my butcher's outfit. In yep. fact, it's quite long. It's very it's long. long. So you can understand that I can actually never wear that. Curse, I can courtesy. Because that is like a bridal gown for me. <laughs> well, we like to use the Japanese sort of style. We're making sando, but we're making a, a Japanese style um, eggplant fried in panko crumbs. Then with the potato. Uh, with the hot sauce drizzled on top, with the mustard. Uh, so down to the cotato, um, which is basically a cabbage ferment. Here we, here we have our amazing organic cabbages that we got from the Adelaide markets. And these ferment, I mean, these, these cabbage leaves, these cabbages are huge. They still had all the leaves on them and they were still covered up, which is kind of that whole emphasis on what it looks like when, they, when they're actually grown and what 
it should like look like when you buy it. So for this, I mean, you don't throw these out. You can use these as weights for your cabinet, for your ferments. You push them down into here. The other thing we do, which I found out, which is a really good one, is if you wash them thoroughly, like, and then you really, really, really finely, like, chop them, you have this sort of really fine sort of, almost like it's like a chiffon art, isn't it? Texturally great. It's got a wonderful bitter element to it, and it's a really good sort of, I guess, garnish for a, a nice dish. It looks amazing. Don't throw them out. Please keep them. Cutting them into quarters for, for this, we're gonna put them in a bowl. I'm gonna massage them with the salt. The salt's gonna break down the, the cells of the cabbage. Dried chili, some fresh chili, which is some grated carrot. Salt, grated carrot and onion. So if you look at that now, I mean, you can see it's shiny already. So the salt is already breaking down and drawing out the moisture from the cabbage. So we're just gonna keep doing this until literally there is so much liquid in here that it will, when we put it in the jar, we'll cover it to the top. This is the fun bit, get your kids to do it. You go watch some TV and get your kids on the cabbage. Here we go, ready? Let's do this. Carrot in, onione in with chili. Dried chili, it depends on how hot you like it. And some dried oregano. And back into it. If you have weights, that's fantastic. If you don't have weights, if you can see what I'm doing there, look. When that gets pushed down, it just keeps everything underneath that brine. So right now how you're here, we're making our hot sauce. So Mandy, last week. Do you know where you put it? Yeah, right here. In the, in the open your eye section? Yeah, plural for everything. Carrot, onion, garlic, um, again, salt and water, and then fermented this for the week, yeah? Uh, and I'm just gonna put this in a blender. The topic is hot sauce. Let's put some ginger, ginger in there. Ginger in there as well, that's right, yes. So this is the fresh ginger we had. On. Go team. And start slowly. Then you can turn it up as you like. This is a, a little thing. bit too much liquid in there. Oh, bollocks. That's all right. Okay. Observe. <laughs> Look at the color. <laughs> uh, I, there's bird's eye, there's jalapeno, there's Traditional, like the mart, Jalapeno. Yeah. Huh? Sorry, God, please. No, what? You got Jalapeno. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Jalapeno. Jalapeno. <laughs> oh, I should not have had that much. <laughs> Ooh. That's a really hot sauce. Yeah. Yeah. That's all that is. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I can't, I if only I'd have known. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> That's what's called hot oh, yeah, sauce. Yeah, I didn't think that through. I was just really excited to eat it. <laughs> we're gonna make a dish, and we're gonna make nasu sando, which is uh, my attempt of Japanese in saying an eggplant sandwich, and it's similar to that from the katsu sando, so the the pork chop yeah. um, crumbed in panko sandwich, usually cabbage or anything like that, and a lot of mayonnaise. Now we're gonna just fast forward everything. Eggplant cut into the shapes of basically classic white loaf, right? So kind of the same shape. So you get that element of, of a, a steak. And people go, oh, it's not a steak. It's like, well, a steak is a cut, right? A steak can be a cut or something. You can have a steak of fish, you can have a steak of whatever. You can have a steak of cauliflower, right? So it's just the cut. Flour, egg, panko. And we might egg panko again, because, you know, extra crisp number. But the thing is, if you don't want to use egg, if you are of that ilk, or they don't want to use anything like that, soy milk, Almond milk, any sort of milk would probably work. I mean, I really think it's just give it a go because it just needs something to stick to, right? And I think if you're gonna dredge a couple of times, milk will work. Right. Um, but the other part of it is, is what eggplant has is it's a slippery surface. And so when you're, when you're egg washing or when you're washing and you're, and you're crumbing, it won't really stick to the skin. So my comment, my thought would be just to peel it.
Do not throw these out. Again, these are all useful. All of it is useful. The only thing you can't really eat is the stem. So big steaks because we can and we're decadent. So while Manny's doing that, I will dredge. So flour first. The reason for flour is because it sticks. And then the reason for egg is so you see how it doesn't stick to the eggplant at all. So you can see how that's still just not going to work. So, so the flour sticks, which is great. Egg sticks to flour. Always keep one hand dry or at least attempt to. And then the panko sticks to the egg. Bosh. Bosh. We double it because we're filthy like that. Done. Okay, so time to put everything together. Um, Mandy's katado, Mandy's hot sauce that we've mixed with uh, with um, Kewpie, which is just the most delicious thing ever. And then finally, our crumbed eggplant. And it smells so good. And I'm not gonna be, I'm not, I'm being so, I'm not gonna be what? I'm gonna be super generous with this because more the merrier, I think. And if it spills everywhere, so be it. So, on. I was, I was about to say, how are we going to eat and cut this? Our eggplant sandwiches, your pickles, your hot sauce, your pickled cabbage, potato, Japanese eggplant sandwich. Poppies! Oh god, I'm fucked. Oh my god, that's good.